Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and in this video, I'll be showing you how to edit this photo. So let's get right into it. So welcome back. Some weeks ago, I did a self-portrait video and you know, a couple of people asked um, for the editing video. So this is me just you know, responding to everybody and you know, taking the cue to show you how I edit some of my pictures, right? So I would be showing you how I got from here to here, right? So let's get right into it. I have the raw file. Um, so by the way, if you really want to maximize your um, photo shoot taking, you should always shoot raw. So I have the raw file here. Um, most times I uh, retouch with Capture One and then export into Photoshop. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to be retouching directly on Photoshop, right? So I shot an R6 um, 85mm f1.2 lens. And um, here are the settings ISO 160, um, f2.8, and one about 400. So I shot hss right so um i'll just do like one or two touch-ups before it goes into photoshop um i'm just going to reduce the highlights a little bit so the exposure can be even across board and then take out my take, take up my shadows a bit so i can see a little of my face like that um maybe take the exposure up a bit um yeah you know take the saturation up a bit and um yeah so i want that really nice um uniform pink you know across board and i think i'm good to go right so i'm going to go ahead and open the image so now this is a more touched up version of the raw right so usually when i want to retouch photos like this i work on the background first and yeah working on the background can be tricky there are a lot of moving parts but um an easy way is to um crop into the image first so i'll look for my crop tool which is this and then i'll crop into the edges of the image right so we have something like this right and then i'd say okay so this is a good starting point right um we're still going to do a few things to this image right so um i can see some um some highlights on the edges here so i'm going to want to clean that up so what 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 i do is i use the rectangular market to to create like a um i don't know what this is called but just create like you know a selection and then in that selection i'm going to free transform the selection so I'll put my mouse on the middle edge and then I'll just drag out and click enter. So there you, now you have a more uniform edge right on that side. So I'm just gonna repeat that process for most of the edges. Um all right, so for now, I think that's the best kind because here we have like a lot going on at this side and I don't want to lose too much of the shadows and everything. So there's something else I'm going to do here. So I can duplicate my layer and then fill. So I'm still going to use the um, rectangular market tool. But now it's looking like, you know, um, this will affect the shoe, so I'll just deselect and 
at this point in time, what usually comes to the rescue for me is the liquefied soul. So here, um, I'm pretty much just going to drag some of these things out of the way and, you know, make it look as realistic as possible. Yeah, so this, this edges, I get them up. Yeah, I hope you can see what I'm doing. I do. Yeah, so this process can actually be faster, but I'm trying to cover all grounds. So for me, cleaning uh, background is more of like an art and you have to, you know, be gentle with it. You don't necessarily have to do this for all your pictures. If you get it right um, in camera, then you don't have to do this for all your pictures. So um, I'm thinking, I still don't want this shadow to be affected. This one at the bottom. So I'm just going to do like a clone stamp tool, which is right here. You know, and then sample some part of the background and then just place. So if you really want a clean background, you might need to use, you know, one or two tools to make sure, um, you know, you have everything covered. So at this point in time, I'm switching to my mixer brush, which you find all the way here. I have short scores for everything, to be honest, but I don't want to use short scores for this video. So. so I'm just going to paint over the shadow, make it a little bit more uniform. Yeah, like that. Um, keep going, keep going. Yeah. Um, I'm going to paint over this as well. And this. Right. Okay, so we have something that we can work with. Um, I'm just going to flatten this, create another duplicate. This time around, um, I'm going to extend the image just a little bit. And then usually when, it, so this is the easiest way to extend the background, right? So you extend the image and then you make sure the content aware checkbox is on and then you press enter. Or if you use a mark, return. And then wait for it to... And voila! We have an extended backdrop. It's that easy, to be honest. And so before and after, you know, this is the before and this is the after, right? So we're getting somewhere. So I'm going to go back to my... Um, so I'm going to flatten this. So by the way, I know some people, when some people are retouching, they, you know, create hundreds of layers and all of that. I pretty much flatten most of my um, layers and I start over again, right? So I want to get rid of this shadow. It's not realistic. And, you know, what's going to do that for me is most likely going to be the um, liquefied tool. So um, we're coming back to it again. Then I'll reduce the size of my brush and just clean this out. So I guess now that you can see the process, you probably, you know, be more finicky and critical about the final outcome. But um, right now, just, just work with me. This is one easy way to get very clean, realistic background. All right. So there you have it. Um, now we have um, a realistic shadow, an extended background, and I think what's next is to work on the skin. It's so the image was shot from behind, and that was about the major lighting here. So it's almost like a silhouette of the subject, but 
with the colors still intact. So um, at this point, um, I'm just going to look for blemishes. You hardly find blemishes in a silhouette, but I'll try. So right now I'm using the, um, the spot healing brush and, you know, just going to touch up one or two things. Nothing serious here, to be honest, you might not need to touch up anything here. Also because of the kind of image it is. Um, it's almost like a silhouette, so you're not going to see a lot of blemishes, but, you know. And if you're like me, that wants to skip to the good parts, you want to see how the background becomes all shadowy and all. We're getting there very soon. I think I just want to touch one or two blemishes and we'll move on from there. Yeah. All right. Um. So this is a speed edit. I'm just going to, you know, um, touch on. So you can get frequency separation actions anywhere, to be honest. Like, there are a lot of free actions online. And you can create your own. Um, if you need help with frequency separation um, actions or uh, steps, you can send me a message or you can put it in the comment section, okay? So um, this is my frequency separation action. Um, most times when you do this, it will ask you for the, radio, for the radius of your Gaussian blocks. And, you know, considering the skin ratio to the entire frame, right, um, I think I'm just going to go for a 4 pixels. Alright, I can explain that later, but um, I want to speed up this process. And then you just do your thing. So this is, I'm using Mixer Brush. Um, I'll find the settings up here. If you are wondering what settings, what best settings to use for your Mixer Brush. Um, this works every time. Yeah. So you might not notice a lot of difference here, but I can see it happening. All right, um, so now I think we have a more, yeah, a more refined image. And then guess what? <laughs> I'm going to flatten my image again. Please don't bite me. Just go with the flow. So now, to complete this image, um, I'm just going to duplicate my layer again, go to the, um, you know, quick selection tool, shortcut is W, and then um, click on select subject. Yeah, so, I might just want to refine my selection with the quick selection tool. Yeah. And um, you can just do a command J to um, expose the selection, right? And then, we're going to select the layer on that. So I'll go back to my folder, right? Um, which already has the um, shadow that I want to import. So by the way, um, there's a website where you can get things like this. It's called Freepik. This is not a sponsored ad for Freepik, but I think that it, it's, it might be good for um, people that want to get overlays and, you know, shadow packs and all of that. You know, it's... It's nice to um, check out platforms like that. So what I'll just do is take out um, this to the background and then just select these guys and drag them into my into my image. Yeah, you might have something like this to look a bit out of place and then so what you want to do is um pre-transform 
your um, free transform what you just dropped and then you can just drag from the midpoint drag down yeah and then click enter so we we'll change our blend mode to linear burn and then um, the opacity to 70% there about and then um, you can decide to move this to the side a little bit no, so you can decide to move this to the side a little bit yeah something like that and then um i think we're almost done i think i want to reduce the first a bit more okay, so now we have you know that shadow accent on the image right and um so at this point in time i think i just want to create you know a new layer that has everything so let me go to camera raw filter and um, adjust my colors. Yeah. So maybe take my reds a little down, and then the saturation will be up, orange down. Yellow down in aqua. This is an easy way to color grade your image. And maybe increase the exposure and vibrance. Yeah, we're good to go. So we have that nice, you know, bright image with the shadow and everything. So there you have it. And this is our final image. So let me know in the comment um, in the comment section if you have learned anything or if I left out anything. If you want to learn more, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for coming and watching this video, and see you next time. Okay. Bye. <laughs>